Hi, everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host and founder of Alzheimer's Speaks, Lori LeBay. Um, for those of you that are new to our show, I'll just give you a little background about um, us here at Alzheimer's Speaks. Basically, we're an advocacy-based company providing multiple platforms to shift our dementia care culture from crisis to comfort around the world. And we believe that by joining forces and sharing knowledge and having everyday conversations about life with dementia, that we're going to be able to remove the stigmas attached to memory loss and help those living with the disease and caring for those living with the disease continue to live purposeful lives. And um, we know we're making a difference um, due to all of our collaborative efforts. And I have to give you guys a big pat on the back. Because of your shares and likes, you know, with your Facebook friends, your LinkedIn colleagues, your Twitter tribes, your Pinterest people, um, you actually um, got Alzheimer Speaks awarded um, as the number one influencer online regarding Alzheimer's, according to ShareCare and Dr. Oz, and we um, definitely could not have done that alone. So. If you're listening and you feel the show is valuable, um, please, you know, continue to push it out um, or go to alzheimerspeaks.com. That's kind of our mothership uh, where you can find out information about not just the radio show, but our dementia chats, which we did this morning. Uh, we do those webinars twice a month. They're free to the public. I will be putting out the recorded one either later tonight or tomorrow. And um, we had a great conversation um, regarding denial, um, not only for family members, but we really focused on the person with dementia and how to work with that. We talked about the medical profession. How do you address it when you're seeing signs and symptoms? And it was a, a fascinating conversation. And again, our experts on uh, dementia chats all have dementia. And so we're getting it right from the horse's mouth there. Uh, we also have a blog. Um, we have a resource directory. We have a YouTube channel. We're always trying to push out new and different types of things. So if you've got some ideas um, and maybe you'd like to be part of the show, reach out to me. There's a big contact button uh, on alzheimerspeaks.com, or you can shoot me an email at lori, L-O-R-I, at alzheimerspeaks.com. And just in your subject line, put radio show. And I'll get back to you because we interview people um, at every level from those who are diagnosed to family members and friends uh, caring for loved ones to business professionals to advocates, um, researchers. Um, I think everyone's voice is important to be heard. And so, again, would encourage you to reach out. Um, we'd, love, we'd love to hear what you have to say. I also wanted to just give a big um, shout out and uh and a big thank you to Autumn Leaves. Um, I was down in Texas last week, and we did five different events, um, well, which were screenings of the film His Neighbor Phil, and they just got a fabulous response from the community. We were in um, Maryland, Riverstone, uh, Pearland, uh, Cinco Ranch, um, and Sci Fair, and you know, people just loved the film and what it stood for. And um, it was really just, they were so gracious um, at hosting these and really appreciate their efforts to make an impact on society at large, both family and businesses, uh, to shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Um, a couple others that I want to shout out to would just be the Caregiver Alert Center. If you're not familiar with this company, again, you can go to our homepage, alzheimerspeaks.com. And on the right-hand column, you'll see a, um, a logo um, for the CAC. Um, this is an incredibly inexpensive way to um, just help you if you're worried about a loved one wandering off. It's only $15 a year, and um, they coordinate all the information, put it into a flyer template. So if you need it, it's there. Coordinate with the police um, and others, and it's just a... 
I think it's just a peace of mind um, <clears throat> offering, basically, uh, for a very inexpensive price. Because when you're in the trenches with someone missing, it's just hard to think straight. Um, if you're not familiar with the Purple Angel program, again, I would encourage you to check that out. You can go to our uh, initiatives and projects page to learn more about it. But basically, the Purple Angel is a symbol um, to just get people to ask, what is that, <clears throat> to open up the door to conversation. If you um, are new to our network here at Alive and Social, um, you may want to check out um, a couple of my cohorts here. Uh, one is Apples to Apples. Uh, it's a father-son team who discusses sports a lot and um, has some interesting conversations as to his father. Uh, does father always know knows best? And then Joan of Art um, is also a really interesting program as well where she interviews people all over um, just doing really cool things with art. And as we know, art has such an impact uh, with people with dementia as well. So that may be of interest. Um, I also want to throw out an, an offer to you um, from audible.com. Um, Alive and Social is... Uh, working with them to um, get out a, a free trial, a 30-day trial of uh, Audible. And you can go to audibletrial.com forward slash social, and you'll have over 180,000 titles to pick from. And you can, you know, read it on your iPhone, your Android, or Kindle, or MP3 player as well. <clears throat> but just go to audibletrial.com forward slash social. A, another company we're partnering with is um, Fresh Books. And if you go to www.gofreshbooks.com uh, forward slash alive, um, there again you can get another 30-day trial. And it's a, it's a great way, especially when we're in tax season, um, you know, when you're thinking about coordinating you know, your, your business uh, <clears throat> finances uh, to check things out there. So um, with no further ado, why don't I go ahead and introduce our guest today. Um, we are just honored to have Trin Rose Seeley with us. She's been on the show before. She is a fabulous individual, um, just probably one of the lightest and nicest spirits I've, I've ever met in my entire life. And she's a professional photographer and a sought-after musician. Um, she has supported the lives of, of both the young and those with special needs and the elderly um, and those with Alzheimer's and related dementias for over 25 years. She's written a caregiver book called 15 Minutes of Fame, One Photo Does Wonders to Bring You Both Back uh, to Solid Ground. And she also teaches mind, mindful art. Um, which is an expressive arts class, and we'll, we'll find out a little bit more from her on that. All of her projects and offerings are designed to empower caregivers and the one they care for. So welcome, Trin. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Great to be with you today. Well, it's, uh, it's Tuesday afternoon, so I had to sing um, Tuesday afternoon. The trees are drawing me near, chasing the clouds away. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's perfect segue, <clears throat> perfect segue, <laughs> because our, our uh, title of our show today is Music to Our Ears. And why do you think music is so powerful? It just is. I mean, think about what what brings life to people. You know, that song, literally when I realized oh yeah we're we're doing this interview on Tuesday afternoon and the Moody Blues song came right to mind and my brother got to play with the Moody Blues years ago and I got to watch the concert and you know they they employ whatever orchestra is near where they're performing and my brother plays upright bass in New Jersey and it was just so wonderful it was like oh that memory came to mind Tuesday afternoon, this song came to mind, and I love the Moody Blues' other music, you know, once upon a time. They just have great music, in my opinion. And so all these memories came to mind simply because we were scheduled to talk today. And this is what happens with people's minds and memories and hearts. 
is those songs that make us feel happy or make us feel calm and relaxed. This is what happens for all of us. So with all the work I've done with people with dementia, it's true. It's just so true. I have many, many stories I could tell, and I will tell some more. Well, good. <clears throat> Music is just such an emotional thing for most of us, and, and yet we don't even realize it or recognize um, how emotional it is to us all. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what, um, what would be one of your um, childhood songs that you just, it, it just kind of brings you back to happy moments? Do you have one? Yeah. Um, I lived in California when I was a young girl, and um, that was when Bye-bye, Miss American Pie, drove the Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. And good old boys were drinking whiskey and rice, singing, this will be the day that I die. You know, it came out. It came mm -hmm. out then, and I was about seven, maybe six. And that song is so emblazoned in my mind, and whenever I hear it, I am transported back to being that young kid in the in the car going to the library or you know doing my thing and as a little girl and it's it just really transports me every time I hear it and um, also uh, Elton John's um, I remember when rock was young <laughs> <laughs> just the cute bippy boppy stuff and it was um, it's wonderful to have those memories you know in my in my body and my mind and my heart mm -hmm. and uh, they play those a lot on the radio, so I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah, it is It is fascinating. Um, and I'm one where I've never really remembered song titles or bands, but as soon as it hits, you know, and I hear it, it just touches me so deeply. And um, it, it's kind of funny. I wish I was one who always remembered that stuff. I, I just never have. But, but you know, I, I can, I, the sense and the feeling is still really, really strong. Um, yeah. you know, with me on that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> now, with your work, um, do you see music really adding quality of life um, to those living with dementia or caring for them? Absolutely. The other thing I was going to say about why music is, in my book, 15 Minutes of Fame, the title has one photo does wonders to bring you both back to solid ground. And it's true for whatever fills your spirit as a caregiver or fills the spirit of the person you're caring for, whether it's stories, telling the stories of their life, showing them photographs, um, showing them Bible passages, um, marking their favorite books with their favorite parts. You know, all these things are the same in my mind. We're, we're going to talk about music mostly today, but it's also true um, to not have a barrier if a person feels like they're not musical and I can't sing, sing anyway, but also, you know, find the resources that bring that person back, bring that person back to you and bring you back to connection. So music in particular really does, um, in all the work that I've done with people with dementia um, and everybody else, I mean, that's my website is all about Alzheimer's and everybody else. These things are not uh, proper and separate from the rest of us. You know, it, it calms me, it calms and feels connected to the person with dementia. And having music that brings that life back also informs others what to do. You know, when, when I was doing full-time uh, all caregiving work, I learned that if I popped in the room in the morning when I'm helping someone get out of bed and, and get their shower and, and come down to breakfast, I would find out what that person responded to. And there's one woman in particular who I would sing, good morning, good morning. And she would just start laughing and giggling and, and we'd get up happy. You know, uh, this is a particular person who other caregivers in the care community where I worked had a lot of trouble. They would march in there and sort of pop on her light and say, oh, get up, time to get, like, wrong, <laughs> wrong approach. <laughs> How about, hey, lovely lady, you know, good morning, good morning, and she would sing with me. She was a singer, too, and then we just 
dip on in the bathroom and get ready to go and then do our lives. You know, it was like a grease the wheels, like a, a pathway that was fun and delightful and led to get having an easy shower and ready to go and dressed. You know, these, I think there's a, there may be a disconnect with people's beliefs about, well, you're just talking about singing and I can't sing. So it's too hard to do this. It's too much. And you don't understand what it's like to try and get up in the morning with her or him. To me, I learned to do a little music within the caregiving tasks. You know, there's a gentleman who was very uh, stressed about anyone coming in his room. Don't come in my room. Ah, and would sort of knock and do a little singing while I was outside the door. And he would sort of wake up and say, "What? what's happening? And I'd say, well, I'm here to make sure you get what you need. And he'd say, oh, well, okay. <laughs> and off we'd go. And But it was like a, a an avenue to doing real tasks, you know, the real, the shower, the getting dressed and, and getting laundry done and all those pieces of a real life. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I kept doing it and I will keep doing it. I, I, I love it. It works. It works. Yeah, I, I think so too. When I worked in um, healthcare, I worked with, uh, for like nine years, the uh, developmentally disabled. And we used to do um, <clears throat> kind of group showers. We did a lot of group things and and people are like, oh, you know, that's not personalized. And it's like, yeah, it's kind of like back to college days, you know, or you're in the gym. And, and we would sing, you know, we'd be shaving our pits and legs all at once. But everybody was laughing and giggling and singing. And it was, it was just fun. I mean, it wasn't this dreaded task. You know, we were just, yeah. there was a sense of community. And, um, you know, you kind of forgot the task at hand, you know, because nobody, you know, wants to yeah. sign up to, to do certain, certain things, you know, and, um, I know with my mom with dementia over the years, it got um, more difficult for her, you know, for bathing and grooming and brushing teeth and all of those things. But man, if, if somebody started singing a song or played some music, you know, she, she was into that. And then she would stay with you, um, through that because she enjoyed the music so much. So the music would override the task and you could yeah. get her teeth brushed or get her in the shower and, and have her not be so combative. Um, and, and that's just so critical and it can really be a lot of fun. It, it starts out if you're not comfortable with music um, <clears throat> as being kind of edgy, you know, because I, I do not have a singing voice. I barely have a talking voice at times, especially with my allergies, you know. Oh, me too. Uh, and, um, and so I'm not a big singer. I just, you know, in church I would, I would uh, lip sync, you know, <laughs> a lot of times because I just I didn't want to get the look from somebody. But <clears throat> through my mom's disease, you know, I just don't care anymore because it, it isn't about tone. It isn't about rhythm. It's about engagement. You know, it's yeah. not about everybody has to be professional. It's just about getting into the moment of joy. And um, and that's just huge. Um, and we, yeah. f- we forget that piece, I think, because we're such a perfectionist, um, you know, yeah. in society at large. And we forget w- what really is the point here. <clears throat> yeah, I'll of- add a story about um, working with young children when I lived in Pennsylvania on the East Coast. I taught kinder music, which mm-hmm. is a program for young children and their families. And the same message was true there where I would say, you know, you're, you're the parent. You're the one who gets to be with them your whole life. And I'm here in this little session with you, but I'm, I'm a singer, but you, they love you and you're the, you're the singer in their heart. And they don't care if you get the pitches right. It's not about getting the pitches just exactly right. It's about the love that you express and the fun that you're having with your child here in this class. And then you take it home and you, you do it around the house and you do it when you're trying to get them to take a bath and you're trying to, you know, get them dressed and ready to go for school. And this is your life with them and they don't mind how it sounds. It's the energy and the love behind it. Absolutely. Well, and even with with children, I, you know, I have a granddaughter and, you know, she comes home from school and she's so dang cute. But she sings her task because that's what the teacher does to get the kids involved. 
and she'll start singing, you know, get out your tablets and, you know, and she has all these little things and whatever it might be, but she steps them through the process through song. And so she'll come home and she will um, relay that to me. So if she wants to play school, she'll start singing out what it is we're going to do and how to repeat, you know, and it's just, and it's fun and it's silly and um, it, it doesn't seem like work. And I think those types of things um, have big impact on us when we're little, um, but they stick with us throughout life. And and yeah. so I think music um, brings us all back to kind of that joy moment, which when we're caring for somebody um, or being cared for, uh, a lot of times we forget that, uh, oh, it's about the joy. Life really yeah. is supposed to be joyful and, and silly and playful, and we get in this... Um, such a task oriented, such a serious mode. And, you know, when we're that serious, um, then all of a sudden that's when all the stressors come out, you know, because we don't feel like we're doing everything the way we should and we start judging and, you know, all of those other pieces come out. Would you would you agree with that, Tree? Absolutely. Absolutely. The the wonderful movie that I'll mention that last time we interviewed we did a movie review and the wonderful movie that's still really changing lives is Alive Inside, Mm -hmm. the movie that um, Michael Rosato Bennett filmed and Dan Cohen, who spent his life on a computer but started out as a social worker and now has really headed up a group called Music and Memory to uh, bring iPods music to people with dementia and it's just amazing the transformation that happens with those folks you know to see that um, personalized music systems can be donated for free or be forty dollars or whatever and those are not covered by health insurance but it makes all the difference in the world to dispel loneliness helplessness and boredom which is the the three things that um, Dr. Bill Thomas, who's the founder of the Eden Alternative, talks about, and he's been talking about that for 30 years, that dispelling loneliness, helplessness, and boredom makes such a difference to a person's life. And music, boy, can you just tap your foot to the music that you, that's your favorite. You know, I, I go from the range of Beatles to Beethoven to the Beach Boys, you know, all of it. I love it all, the classical music and pop and standards there's just a ton of wonderful music in the world and you know you as a caregiver pick the music that makes you feel happy too you know the the movie alive inside really aims to find the precise music that that person loves and i also add to that make your best guess <laughs> play some music do it don't don't hold back just put on some music play it sing it, and it will really transform people's lives, including your own as a caregiver. Yeah, very much so. And and I think so many people don't, you know, we just we just take it for granted. We just take it for granted. And it's just so sad um, that we haven't learned to appreciate um, what is so readily available to us. And yes, um, in so many ways, you know, yeah. we, we've talked about, um, you know, the person with dementia being able to relate and helping them do, ta- um, I was going to say taxes, um, tasks yes, and things. <laughs> yes, let's have them do taxes. That would be good. I'm, I still haven't finished mine. Um, but as far as, you know, the person caring for them, what types of things do you see when you're engaging somebody with dementia? You know, what do you see from the, the care partners? What kind of a reaction um, do you see from them? Yes. Well, currently I am doing an art experience called Mindful Art. I do this uh, class at a day program here in Phoenix, and it's called Mindful Art with Music, Storytelling, and Art Creating. And the first thing that we do in every session is we sing. We start with music because it engages people's energy people who are maybe lost, confused, disoriented. It brings us back. It anchors us back in. And what I 
what I'm doing right now is working with some students, some nursing psych students who need volunteer hours for their program. And it's just absolutely wonderful to have them there both assisting with the class and absorbing this experience that you don't have to just think that a person is going to sit in the corner for the next five years. You can engage them with music and it transforms their idea as they go out into their lives, uh, whether they're working with um, people with mental illnesses, people in the emergency room, people with dementia, elders. I'm really excited that they're part of the experience because they're really, it's changing their perception about what can be done with people just to enjoy the energy that can be generated. Um, I've also invited my eighth grade nephew to, he's done a session, um, he's a musical person, he sang in uh, many musicals over the years, and he, for his final project in eighth grade, a community project of outreach, he did um, Edelweiss, Edelweiss, and, you know, there's this sweet little young fellow with his suit coat and being the captain, and these elders are just giggling and smiling and singing along. Um, it's it's changing these young people's lives, and they're the future, right? We're here. We're here now doing our work with people with dementia. It's really transforming back into integrating all ages and just plain enjoying life instead of it being a separate sort of thing that happens that's a caregiving relationship that's different than what you expected in life which is also true, but it's wonderful to see these young people being served by the experience, getting into it, providing it, and enjoying what happens for people. There are also some wonderful choirs called threshold choirs when a person is heading towards passing away that will come and sing, and those things can all be accessed online for the person you're caring for if that's where they're at just providing that music fills the caregiver's heart and fills the the experience that you're having with that person. Oh, I've never heard of the threshold um, choirs okay. at all. Do most hospices know about that? I would say so. I mean, it's a it's an individual group um, nonprofit of its own called Threshold Choirs. Mm-hmm. And But hospices also are very in tune with knowing. I mean, it's also about caregivers realizing that they can ask their hospices for music. Please send the person who plays the harp, you know, please send them to our home. We would love to have some harp music played for us. Um, I personally play the dulcimer, which also sounds a lot like the harp, very gentle, sweet. The name is means sweet sound dulcimer and people can ask for that they can say please bring some music it would be wonderful Mm -hmm. to the home well I know my mom just you know she was on hospice um, three years before she died and because of those services um, she got she got re-engaged and then she got taken off hospice (laughs) yeah yeah Um, but music still here (laughs) but yeah but music was a really big piece for her you know that kind of pulled her back in um, to our world here, where I think she was kind of getting ready to let go. And um, <clears throat> it was a, an amazing process to see. And then it kind of saddened me that it's like, oh, now we have to let go of those services because she's doing better. Um, yet, you know, as um, a care partner, you don't ever want those services to end. You you know, you want, you want their life to be enhanced and yeah. um, engaged, you know, on multiple levels and and um, it was it was too bad, but that's just kind of the way our system works, you know, on yeah, the whole. Yeah. Can you? And sh- when mm-hmm. it, sorry. Oh, go ahead. ahead. Well, just that if people are still able and interested in being out in the community and going out, it's nice to find daytime concerts at your local library or at the botanic gardens in your town. These are the daytime energy is better than nighttime, and I see a lot of concerts happening in the culture now people understand that it's nice to have a concert at 11 in the morning or two in the afternoon 
and on a Saturday or even during the week, look for those schedules at your local library and find out when you can go and enjoy an experience, especially in a library setting or a garden setting. You don't feel like you have to sit down and stay for two hours and you know, stop fidgeting and be quiet. You just get to kind of walk in, enjoy what's there, and when you're ready to leave, you go. This is a wonderful thing that their people are really looking to provide in public spaces, music, music experiences that will really feed all ages and all people, and in particular, a person who's caring for someone with dementia. Well, and there is so many uh, free services like that available through the park systems, through yes. community centers. I mean, it's it's kind of amazing when you when you finally tune into it. Um, the the difference that it can make out there is um, quite fabulous, you know, with people. Yes. And again, um, <clears throat> time can always make a difference too in terms of. You know, your individual, are they a morning person, afternoon or evening? I mean, because everyone is a little bit different out there. Um, yeah. So you do have to know what's going to work best for your for your particular loved one, um, you know, out there. There's there's no doubt about that. But that's, um, you know, once you have that figured out, you're usually pretty good um, to yeah. go ahead and, and move forward with that. So can you share with us, um, maybe some stories of how music can transform a person's mood? Yes. Yes. There are so many to tell. One of the first early stories that really informed me about how this can happen is I was working at a care community in Colorado and I was working with a one one on one with an individual woman who had a lot of back pain and she needed to stay in her room for the first couple of months that I was working with her. I eventually started working with the whole group so I would alternate days with her in particular and the whole uh, community in general. And because I just love people and I love to see all these different individuals here they are in, in their experience of dementia, what's happening with these people, and are they still there? Yes, they are. There was a, a woman named Marie who was very agitated. It was challenging for her to walk. She couldn't speak. And I said, you know, I would like to provide an evening music session because I was hearing from the other caregivers in the building you know, why do we have to end our activities at 5 o'clock? We still have a whole night's worth of events, and people are stressed and agitated. And so I provided a one evening a week of music starting at 6 o'clock. And I saw this woman, Marie, and I said, would you please just bring her on in, you know, see if she would like to listen to the music. And they brought her in, probably the fourth row back, so again, this is a woman who just really was sort of agitated and stressed. She couldn't really eat comfortably. She had this sort of panic look in her eyes, just was uncomfortable. Well, I started singing, and she sang every word of every song all night. <laughs> she, <laughs> she sang every single word, and I just was amazed. I was looking at this lovely woman that I was really caring about and seeing her sing and relax. And I was amazed and stunned. And I said to the caregiver that night, please bring her every time <laughs> because this is the one thing that she can do that makes her feel comfortable again. Mm -hmm. You know, and there were many stories from that time. There was another woman who was less comfortable with the crowds. You know, she'd say, well, no, I don't think I'll come to the music day. And But she was musical, I, I was understanding from the care community folks. And I heard that she was a ukulele player, and I said, well, I think I'll just go visit her sometime when I had some free time to do a one-on-one -on -one connection with her. And I brought my ukulele because I play too and I played her a couple of songs and she started really lighting up and, and smiling and she started singing me this song he gave me kisses one kisses one he gave me kisses one kisses one he gave me kisses one and our life had just begun mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. 
Kisses Two, Kisses Three is a song. I'm still trying to find this song, and it was so wonderful. It it came up for her. She's like, that's the song I used to sing. And then uh, in the future um, music sessions, I would just go by her room and say, hey, we're we're going to be playing music together if you'd like to come. And she started coming to the group. You know, from being isolated in her room and feeling like she couldn't really join in for whatever reason. There's many reasons that were possible. Mm-hmm. But that I could spend private time with her, re-engage her connection with music for herself, and even to the point of her joining in with the group. That's mm-hmm. that's just wonderful to me. Wonderful. Well, that's very neat. I know my mom... Um, when she was in the nursing home, they had um, they had a group that would go around and sing, and so she would kind of brag to the rest of us that she was in the choir, and yeah. and how much joy she got out of singing, and and how much the others you know loved um, hearing and seeing them sing, you know. And then as her disease progressed, she wasn't able to um, get around, and she wasn't able to to remember all the words and stuff. But then, you know, the choir would come and sing to her. And Mm -hmm. um, it would just still reignite everything. And you would see where she would be lipping things, but not always having the right words. Um, But you would see her hands tap and her feet start tapping. And you'd just see this big old smile on her face. And this, you know, her eyes would just glisten. And she was just thrilled to have that music piece. Um, and it was just so important to her, Um, and as I think it is to many. Now, there's going to be a few people out there listening to this that are like, I don't like music, you know, and it's Uh like, well, then then this might not be for you, and that's okay, but it might be for your care partner. Um, You know, it might be for somebody else, and the thing that's cool, I think, with music, too, is it's, it's catchy. When somebody is in a good mood, when they're really authentically, sincere with it um, everybody notices and it like changes the energy in the room and I think that's one of the things alive and social show or alive and social that's our network here alive inside (laughs) Um, the film shows that you you know as an observer you see a person who might be really sleepy or tired or depressed and just unengaged doesn't want to be there they put this headset on them and their whole body language changes. The, the head that was drooped down and asleep is now, you know, standing strong. And all of a sudden there's a smile on their lips and there's a glint in their eye. And, you know, their hands and their toes start going and they start singing the words. And then you, you know, it, it'll, it'll kind of span out. And then you see the reaction of people watching this in the room. And they're just amazed that there can be this connection and so then that brings a sense of joy to them and a sense of hope. So there's really exactly. this true ripple effect, I think, that occurs um, that, again, once again, we, we really just kind of take it for granted. And yeah. we, have to, we have to look a little deeper and a little harder with that. It's amazing. It's mm-hmm. amazing. I've posted on my Facebook page um, today the clip from the Alive Inside of the man named Henry. Mm-hmm who was in the care community for 10 years and just simply was not engaged, just yeah, as, you, as you described, that sleepy, unconnected kind of a sort of surprise when anyone would talk to him. What? 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 I'm here. What? Mm-hmm. Didn't know what to say, didn't, wasn't engaged. And just putting that headset of music, he just came to life. I mean, I just, it's stunning that the work that they've, they've, portrayed you know the alive inside is a a big huge commercial for all of us to remember that music makes a difference and sometimes if a a child of a person who is a musician and the child doesn't feel like they're musical bring the music to them anyway Mm -hmm. be brave to go ahead do it you know whether it's a recording it's a cd it's a, a youtube online you know, bring the music to that person. And to me also as an instrumentalist, if I had dementia, I would want someone to hand me my guitar and say, here's a guitar. And I would start to play it. I feel confident that I would know what to do. I've got muscle memory for 35 years of playing the guitar. It would just be there. Um, there was a 
there's a story in my book of a man who we had this wonderful piano in our in the place where we all lived and we created a, a music list of about five songs that he knew how to play he was pretty also pretty far energetically removed from regular connection he just was stressed and sort of uncomfortable and not connected but when we would say hey come on over to the piano for a minute and sit down with him and we'd play the song it had to be you it had to be you he would start to play it and he would play the whole thing and he it re-engaged his energy every time every time that particular song there were others but that one just stands out and made it into my book as put it that instrument put him in front of that instrument and put his hands there and let him remember Mm -hmm. give him a chance you know really my book is written for caregivers to not forget the person that they're caring for don't don't forget them don't forget their lives the things that they love there's another woman in the book who you know loved the song um irene good night her mom's name was irene Mm -hmm. and she would sing it along with us when she was lost and distressed and we would start singing that song she'd laugh and be re-anchored and and be reconnected it's just really wonderful to see that happen Oh gosh, and I, I you know I hear that song and I think of my folks and I think of the piano bar and you know and just people joyful singing those songs and stuff together, and um, it's it's a form of reminiscing um, that I think sometimes people don't realize. It, it in my estimation, anyways, it, it is a true form of reminiscing. It's going back to a different time, and um, you don't necessarily have to have a picture or a specific story, you just let it unroll however it chooses to, to form. And, um, and it's different each time because our moods change, their moods change, um, you yeah. know, their point of reference changes, and it's just a wonderful way to learn more. Even asking somebody when they're singing that song, what does it mean to you, you know? Yeah. Who, who are you with? Who does it remind you of? Because usually there will be people in events attached to a song. You know, yeah. there's a moment in time, but we don't ask that question normally. Um, and depending on where they are in the disease process, they may not be able to answer that. But if we start it early enough, there's lots of cool things we can learn about our parents, our loved ones, our friends, and those we're caring for by just asking, you know, a really simple yeah. question. Um, yeah. We can really invoke a lot. Why don't you tell people yeah. a little bit about your book, Trin? Yes. Well, it's called 15 Minutes of Fame. One photo does wonders to bring you both back to solid ground. And it's to empower caregivers of those with Alzheimer's. I've been told that it helps other people too, you know, people with children with autism or muscular dystrophy. People have given me feedback that these ideas are just supports them as well. Um, It's available on my website, which is caregiverheart.com. It's on Kindle, it's on Nook, it's available as a PDF that's viewable on any computer or device, and I also have printed copies. It's, uh, it's, just a, it's really a summary of the things that I learned as a full-time caregiver that just bringing people's lives back to them really helps. And it doesn't just help that moment, it helps for an hour, it helps for a day, and it certainly uh, fills the caregiver with more energetic, positive energy, you know, to be able to connect with the daily routine of things to do. And it just it was felt really good to create this book, and I'm really glad to share it with people and empower people to um, fill their toolbox, you know, put put a song in your pocket or put a photo there, um, tell a life story that, makes a person feel reconnected. It just really matters. Um, I did a talk at my church on Valentine's Day. Uh, every year we do a caregiver service at Valentine's Day. And really the words that came to me for that talk is to create places for people to shine. Mm-hmm. And doing that with music really 
is easy and you can play music for people you know live instrument if you're an instrumentalist you can play cds you can go on the computer and create uh, a playlist of a person's favorite music and play that you know it, there's no reason not to provide music in some way or another just like my my empowering the young children caregiver parents you know don't feel like you have to sing perfectly to be a singer it's really about your heart being expressed to your child and the same is true for our, our families our friends people who are having dementia get in the way of their lives bring them back with music bring them back with these things that help them remember who they are yeah exactly um <clears throat> I was going to ask you, in terms of, you know, music, we've kind of talked about music in person. Um, do you see music playing a role in terms of, you know, tapping into technology itself? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mentioned YouTube. Um, I've posted on my personal Facebook page, The Song, Tuesday afternoon. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, it, I can sing it, and so did the Moody Blues. There's some great uh, videos out there of all these favorite songs that we have. So if you're a person who surfs the web and looks around, you can find anything. You can find classical. You can find special footage that's never been, you know, never been shown before, or never got to make it to final production. People are pulling these archives out and putting them online. Wonderful music that you can play. You can enlarge your screen and turn up the volume and play it. Um, There's a wonderful resource uh, for hard copy people like myself. (laughs) There's a a group called Alzheimer's Music Connect. They are on Facebook and and all, but I've reviewed their first collection of music, which includes uh, several CDs with big band medleys, vocal standards. There's also a particular caregiver meditation that's almost an hour long of music that you can pop on when you just need some calming connection for yourself. There's a whole information accepting the challenge of caregiving for someone with dementia, more than two hours of material that's supportive too. And it's just, it's wonderful music. You know, in my search for music, it's nice to find just a straightforward, simple, here's the tune, it's delicate, it's not boomy and too loud, and it doesn't jump around in volume. It's this wonderful group. They're, again, called Alzheimer's Music Connect, a wonderful group. There's another group called Coro Health. I met them years ago at an Eden Alternative Conference they create a particular programmable box that they program for you um, that can be played in it. They do it for care communities, so it can be sort of played in the atmosphere all the time, you know, quieter music in the morning, energetic towards lunchtime, and quieter again in the evening. You can also purchase those separately in private homes now um, just to program music that's happening in the background that can also be in the foreground. It can be something you're particularly listening to, or it can just be what's happening behind, you know, to to instill the energy of the day. Um, Coral Health is a wonderful group. And so, you know, play the songs you've always played is another just piece of my support. Don't think that it has to be this rocket science strange, what do I play now? Play the songs you've always enjoyed. And that will bring joy to you, will bring joy to the person you're caring for. And if you can leave a list for somebody who's doing, you know, private care for you, for your loved one while you're taking a break, whether it's home care or a a live-in help, you know, these are the stages that we go through if we need more help in the home. Tell them what you do to bring that person joy. And if it's music, boy, hand them the list or hand them the the computer, hand them the, the very thing that makes that music happen for them. And then they that person can create a place for your family member to shine as well. 
Agree. And I, I love both of the resources that you brought to the table. Alzheimer's Music Connect with Ron Gregory. Um, you know, they just do such great, great um, work. And, and um, I know my mom and so many others just enjoy this music. And they have different genres and they've got religious, just like Coral Health does too, yeah. um, which is just a wonderful route to go. And you know, Coral Health, and that's C-O-R-O, um, yes. because sometimes people think it's Coral. Um, you. And, um, you know, both do just a wonderful, wonderful um, job um, making it easy um, to bring to bring music forward. And um, Dave uh, Schufman is the, the co-founder and CEO of, of Coral Health. Both, yeah. are, like I said, just do um, have great teams Um working with them. So make sure you check out both, both of them. I know a lot of people just also tap into like Pandora and some of the other yeah. free music services. And, but again, you need to know what is their genre of music because my genre might not mesh with my mom, though there's some songs that she liked that I would consider my, my era versus hers. Um, and then there were others you could just see your cringe. <laughs> you know, and, and <laughs> don't, if you see the cringe, don't play that. But yeah. I think it's also really good to to make your best guess if you don't know, it, because it can be a barrier to people to think, I don't know what their favorite music is. I, you know, and it, then do it anyway and try and see. You could see the reaction. This is working. This is calming. This is connecting. This is energizing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, there are... Um, there are, you know, another connection out there with music would be a, um, an actual person who is a certified music therapist. And um, what are your thoughts on, on using a, a certified music therapist versus, Absolutely. versus just the general Joe out there? Sing along. Well, most of us are general Joes, so I really do champion everybody doing it because we need to keep providing as much positive energy around supporting people with Alzheimer's as we all can. That's the reason I really wrote my book is because we all need to be as empowered as we can be. I am thrilled that music therapy I see is going to be coming back as a big field of study. About 10 years ago, I was aiming to um, get a degree and all the departments were closing. And that was 10 years ago. Now I see programs reopening because it is wonderful and valuable. And if we can keep encouraging music therapists to do their work, hopefully mm-hmm. insurance will continue to rise up and, and cover it. You know, occupational therapy is covered, physical therapy is covered, music therapy is sometimes covered and sometimes not. But the more that we, as every person who's listening and every person out there, knows that music really does transform lives and people can be on less medications often because their energy is better. Um, this will this will help the music therapy field as a field and have our young people, as I mentioned, my eighth grade nephew and these nursing psych students move into their lives. I I can see people choosing music therapy as a field and seeing the programs reopening is very exciting. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm just, as we're talking, I'm multitasking and looking at some of my Google alerts, and one just popped up, says, music stirs memories for people with dementia. And, you know, it really does. It really does stir up connections and um, engagement. It relaxes the environment. I mean, there's so there's there's such a list of positives that it brings to the table that we really have to remove the piece of am I on key or not, you know, or do I have every word right? Who the heck cares? You know, it's about, it's really about having fun and um, enjoying one another and, um, and, and just keeping it simple. And for some who can't sing, you know, throw in a CD or pop open, you know, play some music on your phone or on your TV. I mean, it, it doesn't, this isn't about making anyone uncomfortable. You know, that's not the point of it. The point yeah. is to get people relaxed. And um, I, I know that there's talk, too, about um, with music therapists versus everybody in terms of how often do you use music. And do you have any thoughts on that? As often as possible. When, when I did full-time care, 
I would get up and get in the building about 7 in the morning, and I would turn on something. There was a wonderful collection I have on a CD. It's not in front of me. I don't remember the name right now, but it's it's got birds singing, and it's got, you know, the classical... Well-known Pierre Gint Suites, what that one's called. And just to have something going on that's in the environment. And then when people would be waking up and we're getting people to the breakfast table and we're starting to chat, we whip it up to, you know, anything but you did, 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 did. You know, bring up the energy while the energy's joining in. And we do an exercise circle at 11 in the morning and we're doing some higher key stuff. And when there's people sitting quietly in the in the living room, where we we give them some space from it. So I say, you know, it's important to play music as often as you can. Um, Alzheimer's Music Connect particularly recommends, you know, make it a routine, play mm-hmm. it at a certain time, and it helps get your tasks done as well as just fill the environment with something really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a believer in tapping into it as much as possible. And if a, if a person is getting tired of listening to the music, then turn it off. But yeah. um, I know a lot of music therapists think that it needs to be incremental in terms of use or the ones that I've talked to and that it can be overused. I have not personally seen that at yeah. all. Um, yeah. I, I think that they there's a lot of things that um, a music therapist can bring to the table that us average Joes can't. Um, because they're trained to look for it and develop it and and do different things. Um, But music as a whole, I mean, many of us just play it throughout the day um, in our lives, in the car, you know, as soon as we get up in the morning, we pop it on. Um, And so, you know, part of it is going to be how how did your person with dementia utilize music before? Um, Mm -hmm. You know, that might be one thing to to consider. Um, But again, with dementia as a whole, it's all about trial and error. You know, yes. there, there isn't a magic key. There isn't one way to do it. It's just trial and error. And, um, you know, when we're trying and when we are um, trying to assess, we have to assess not just verbals, but we have to also really look hard into the nonverbals um, yes. in terms Absolutely. of communications and insights and things there. So... Um, yes. Yeah, import, important lessons. Um, wanted to just, you know, our hour has just about blown by here. I want to make sure that we give people all your contact information. So do you want to tell them the best modes to reach you? Thank you. Yes, yeah, so thank you so much for the conversation, Lori. And the conversation will continue with between us and between other people who realize that music therapy as a field is just absolutely wonderful and the rest of us can also engage people with music. My website is caregiverheart.com where my book 15 Minutes of Fame is available. As I say, it's available for Kindle. It's available for Nook. It's available just to download to view on your computer or your device. And I distribute printed copies from my name, Trin Rose Seeley, from my email at trinrose, T-R-Y-N-R-O-S-E, at gmail.com. I do regular talks in the Phoenix area and love to share the book online as well as happy to mail it out to you. Um, There's great places online to find me. Uh, Your wonderful group, Lori, has listed all my links there. Um, Facebook.com slash caregiverheart is a place where you can come and enjoy what I post. I post a lot of music there, but I also post research articles. There's so much in the research that shows the music. I mean, you can take it from my mouth or you can take it from the research that's out there. Music really changes lives, and it is not extra frill that we can do without. It adds to the quality of life. It sure does. It sure does. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here, Trin. You're always uh, just so much fun to talk to and, um, you know, keep up the great work. You just have such a great uh, a great spirit in terms of connecting people through music. So I, um, I appreciate all you do. Thank you, Lori.
Thank you. Um, for those of you that missed our last show, uh, we talked about tips to live well with dementia, um, 10 tips to live well with dementia with Joe Huey. Um, all As all of our shows are, they are archived. So um, if for some reason you couldn't listen to this whole show, don't worry. Um, it will be recorded and you'll be able to uh, download that or just play it and listen uh, without a problem. Our last Dementia Chats actually was this morning. We had a great conversation about denial. Um, and primarily we talked about the person uh, having dementia symptoms being in denial and how does a family address that? Um, how does a doctor address that? Um, the one before that, um, we talked about how people with dementia arrange and organize their schedules, and those are all recorded. The one from this morning I have not um, edited yet, but I will be doing that hopefully tonight or tomorrow. I'll get that pushed out. And then our next Dementia Chats will be on the 26th of this month. Uh, we talked earlier about His Neighbor Phil when I was down in Texas where we did five premieres with Autumn Leaves, which was fantastic. Um, next week I'm going to be in Wilmer, Minnesota on the 19th. Um, the West Central Dementia Awareness Network is having a, um, a conference, and um, that's going to be held at the Assembly of God Church in Wilmer. And um, I'll be the, the keynote for the day there. And that'll go from 1 to 8, and that will also include um, a screening of the film um, towards the end there. And then I'm going to go back down to Texas, in Tyler, Texas, with the Alzheimer's Alliance of Smith County on the 28th, where I'm going to do a caregiver survival camp. Um, and that'll be from 9 to 3 down there. You can find information on both of those on our homepage at alzheimerspeaks.com. And let me see, I did post a blog back on the first, um, which was a, a repost called A Gift Given by One of Our Heroes Living and Dying with Dementia, which was about Dina Dotson, who chose to take her life um, versus continuing to live with the disease and um, a big decision um, for anyone to make. And I know that not everyone agrees with um, assisted suicide. Um, but I think it's a, a conversation that needs to be talked about. People need to understand the struggles if if we're going to change things at all or if we're going to come to an acceptance with this. And um, then there was also an article on the mindful caregiver finding ease in the caregiving journey. Um, I want to, again, thank you all for being with us. And I look forward to our next show, which will be on Friday when we're going to be talking with Kathy Borey, uh, who has a beautiful new book um, that's just going to be launched here in the, uh, in the States called The Long Hello. And Kathy is just a marvelous, marvelous uh, individual, and I can't wait to talk with her. Um, again, that will um, be on Friday at 1 p.m. Central. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Bye now. Hi, this is Suzanne Newman, host of the Answers for Elders podcast and radio show. We are the North Star that guides you through the complicated journey of senior care with trusted experts in money, law, living solutions, and more. So join us on this station, your favorite podcast channel, or just go to AnswersForElders.com. Meet the Wayshowers who will help your journey a lot easier.